Vice President Kashim Shatima has defended the administration's decision to spend 15 billion naira to build a residence for him in Abuja. Shatima, through his spokesperson, was responding to recent criticisms of the project by the presidential candidate of the Labour Party during the 2023 elections, Peter Obi, who questioned why the government planned to spend so much money on building and renovating residences both in Abuja and Lagos for the vice president, but budgeted a paltry five billion naira for student loans in the country. The vice president denounced Obi's comments, describing it as a series of misguided attacks and falsehoods, stating that the decision to resume the project, which was abandoned by previous administrations, was in line with the Tinubu administration's commitment at completing long abandoned public projects across the country. Shatima further accused Obi of post-election trauma and divisive rhetoric, urging him and others in opposition to accept defeat gracefully and prioritize Nigeria's interests. I believe the director pulled up Obi's, uh, Peter Obi's tweet. Let me just get some of that. What Obi said, I believe, on Monday was that uh, he, he wrote, even as I am still studying the 2024 fiscal budget as presented to the National Assembly last week, I cannot wait as I am compelled to ask, what is exactly wrong with us as a country? I mean, this tweet got a lot of reactions. He further went on to say, the budget of 5 billion naira for student loans, which is yet to be disbursed, is only a tiny percentage of the cost of the vice president's new home. We are projecting to use four times the amount for educating all Nigerian indigent students to house the vice president. We need leaders to show compassion and are willing to sacrifice for common progress and development. Such compassionate and frugal leaders are critical in our journey to the new Nigeria. Over to you while I catch my breath. Ayo Mude. Absolutely. I, I, first of all, before I comment on the story, I must say that thank you to the opposition leaders, um, opposition, Absolutely. for doing what they are supposed to do, which is, as in opposition, um, check government, criticize when necessary, and also give alternatives as well. I think that's also one area that we must look into. So beyond just um, pointing out where the government isn't doing very right, is also giving an alternative solution to the issues at hand. So that's that. So thank you so much. And, and, in, and in saying that, I must say that the um, you know, vice president response shouldn't shame Pre um, Mr. Peter Obi for doing what he ought to be doing, Absolutely. being in the opposition. That is checking, going through documents, and not just him. I could also see so civil society organizations like Budget and the likes who have also taken it upon themselves, journalists as well, to criticize, to critically look at the budget and bring out or point out things in there that ought not to be there. When you look at the current state of affairs in Nigeria, especially economically, Unfortunately, there's no justification. It's the same way where they try to justify the number of people that were sponsored to COP28, saying that, oh, it was important under the current economic climate. It's the same way they're trying to justify the fact that in front of the Vanguard newspaper today, there's a further breakdown of how much money is being spent, in, you know, especially um, at state level. Uh, 15 billion naira on trips is what's budgeted in 2024 elections. A villa mechanical electrical maintenance at 9 billion naira. All these OG are higher than the student loan. So this is where you put education and this is where you put sustaining or maintaining buildings or funding the lifestyle of people in government. Not reflective at all. Vehicles, even though um, in the supplementary budget we talked about the vehicle allocation, there's still a vehicle allocation of 6 billion naira in the 2024 um, budget. Then we have honorarium, which is, well, that's a party three hundred. 65.8 million naira. And then you wonder that what really is the priority of this particular government? What is the priority? When, they, um, when um, President Tinubu was campaigning and even during his inauguration speech, he had talked about his commitment to security, to education, to the young people in Nigeria. But it's not reflective in the spending and what the budget um, talks about. So if you're giving 15 billion naira to renovate, the presidential quarters, which, by the way, is not necessary at this time. I say that emphatically. Um, Rufai keeps giving the example of the, uh, of, the vi of the prime minister of France, who cannot even dare say he wants to touch his official residence because the people will be up in, ar in arms. And then here we are, battling an economic crisis whereby we're looking at the um, budget deficits, we're looking at revenue shortage, we're looking at um, having to service debt, and what we're focused on is spending billions of naira on buildings 
and trips. And then we are putting 5 billion naira to give to student loans that people, you know, the students and us who are saying that is nowhere near enough. We have to rethink. And as um, John Maxwell says, everything starts and rises and falls with leadership. Our leaders must begin to demonstrate that they are part of this society we live in and they are in touch with the sufferings of the people. I hope that this will be shut down in the House. I hope, that being the key word, because as we said, it looks like a rubber stamp assembly. But I hope that when it's defended in the House, they will shut it down and take off some numbers and not actually inflate these numbers under these categories. Well said, Ayo. Uh, Dr. Vati, I'd like for you to you know, start with the NAF aircraft, my first story. Okay. I mean, well, the, uh, you, you recall that uh, when uh, President uh, Buhari was campaigning. One of the things he said in 2019, ahead of the 2019 election, was that he was going to sell some of the aircraft uh, in the presidential fleet. Yes. But he got there, he didn't uh, sell any aircraft. If anything, I think under his watch, they even acquired, you know, another an additional helicopter. But now this time around, under the uh, uh, Chinubu administration. They are trying to sell off uh, one of the Nigerian Air Force uh, aircraft. Mm. The Nigerian Air Force, by the way, manages the uh, presidential fleet, yes. and they have all the ceremonial aircraft that they use uh, for official purposes. So this one is said to be a Falcon, right? Now, the only thing that I see here is that, well, I don't know about aircraft, but this aircraft has been commissioned, has been in service since 1990. The people who know the subject say, with an aircraft, it's not the age that matters, yes. it's the quality of the uh, maintenance. But the only caveat that I have here is that they're asking people to do an open bid, either to do it virtually or to do it physically. And if you do it physically, you seal it, all in line with the Public Procurement Act of uh, 2007, as uh, Air Commodore Gap, Gap quite, uh pointed out. Now they are saying that the payment will be in dollars. Why would uh, the Nigerian government, Nigerian Air Force, want to sell aircraft, Nigerian-owned aircraft, operated by Nigerian Air Force, and they are quoting in dollars? The currency of Nigeria is in uh, Naira. It's Naira. So they, are, they, are, they will exclude people who uh, are patriots, who spend Naira. The CBN Act of uh, uh, 2005, says that the, the current 2007 says that the national currency of Nigeria is the Naira. So if the federal government wants to sell a commodity, forget the father is an aircraft and they want to sell it in dollars. So why would anybody then complain again if uh, landlords are collecting rent in dollars, if some supermarkets, some markets, some shops, luxury shops, by the way, it's not small. your kind of supermarket. That's why I, I quickly change uh, the phrase. The luxury shops are, are selling items in dollars. So, we, and there are some government departments that I even understand quote and accept payment in dollars. Yes. Now, look, if we want the Naira to have integrity, maybe we should do transactions more in Naira. In I don't know, some people may be laughing and say, how much? Uh, uh, how much uh, lorry loads of Naira will purchase one uh, yes. aircraft. But it's good to see that they are cutting fat. Yes. They need to cut fat, yes. not just with the fleet managed by the Nigerian Air Force, but also cut fat, run a lean government, a more efficient government in every area, including the meals that they cons consume uh, at the highest levels, and including the trips that they embark upon, whether to Dubai or, uh, or to uh, elsewhere. As for the statement credited to the vice president, I checked that statement. That was a statement issued by his uh, spokesperson, yes. uh, Stanley Nkocha. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I've seen Stanley Nkocha issuing a statement. Sometimes I tell our colleagues or you know, the boys that are on the block now that it's not everything you respond to. There's nothing that uh, uh, Mr. Obi said, Peter Obi said that uh, Waziri Adamawa has not said that all of us on this table did not say about uh, you know the the building because we said look at a time when there is austerity in the land we shouldn't be talking about big big structures but the explanation by Stanley Kocha is that this was a project that had been there and an abandoned project since 2010 and that government has returned to it. The FCTA, Federal Capital Territory Administration, led by Yesom Wike, which manages structures 
in the Federal Capital Territory says he, do, he doesn't want abandoned projects. But he has gone to start with, uh, you know, the VP's residence. When we had earlier been told in the supplementary budget that, you know, provisions have been made for the renovation of the VP's uh, residence. So that's why people are raising uh, issues. So all the explanations given by Stanley Nkocha uh, it doesn't make sense. But the, the funny part of it that I found is that uh, uh, Peter B is suffering from post-election trauma. Now, using such strong language, we not stop the opposition Absolutely from not. speaking. Yeah. So spokespersons should know their limits. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it's one thing to be, to be seen to be working. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it's the VP himself that will go and, uh, and say, okay, go and write a statement to go and abuse uh, Peter V. Nobody does that. But Stanley Okocha will jump ahead and say, I have to defend my ogre. I have to defend my ogre. If he, if he wants to do that with this emerging opposition, mm -hmm. he, he, will, he will be busy every day yes. writing rejoinders. Yes. I love that word, emerging opposition. I love the fact, and, and your point is quite valid, the fact that these two oppositions, they're out here now questioning all the facts. We have Atiku Abubakar yes. and uh, Peter will be continuing to, you know, shine light on these issues that disturb Nigerians. Well, let's